Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism. So let me take this bizarre video on. Okay, so I'm going to talk about astrology, but not the way you think. Believe it or not, I was actually raised a little bit on astrology. It matters to South Asian families, actually for decision making around marriage and stuff like that. I don't really ascribe to it or believe in it. I don't think, you know, it's not my thing, but it's cool if that's your thing. Bear with me for a minute here, right? So I was thinking about it the other day. So we all have our sun sign, a rising sign, and a moon sign. And together, they're all supposed to mean something. I don't fully understand how astrology works. So apparently, I'm a Capricorn sun with a Scorpio rising and a Pisces moon. Now, if that means someone who's chronically disorganized, self-critical, works too much, and eats too much sugar, then clearly all that adds up. But I, I researched this to figure out what mine were. But this whole way that they mix up these astro astrological signs made me think about narcissism, just like everything does. And maybe my zodiacal stuff means I'm slightly obsessive too. But this video is actually not about astrology. It's about how we can use these sort of different ways to classify something and that it changes things when we put them together. So a Capricorn with Scorpio rising apparently is going to be different than a Capricorn with Aquarius rising, right? Make sense? So this is going to go into the point of this video because a question because a question I get from lots of people is whether a narcissist can be more than one kind of narcissist. And the answer is absolutely. In fact, most are. And I thought, oh, maybe this is like a sun sign and a rising sign and a moon. So a person could be a grandiose narcissist sun sign with a vulnerable rising and a malignant moon. That was, I mean, this is what keeps me up at night, folks. But in all seriousness, people are typically primarily one type of narcissist. I guess they're sun sign, grandiose, vulnerable, communal, self-righteous, malignant, and on and on. But then we can see an overlap I guess that's the rising sign of another narcissistic pattern. For example, a grandiose narcissist who might have lots of communal features and maybe even some self-righteous patterns behind that. That could be their moon, right? These typologies matter because they can relate to the types of red flags we would see, the feelings that these relationships bring up for us, and even the nature of narcissistic abuse. So what do you think this looks like? Let's use the grandiose narcissist as our sort of our sun sign here, right? So let's say grandiose narcissism was the sign. The rising sign, as it were, is the one that shapes what the grandiose narcissism might look like based on what the other pattern is. So, for example, when we see grandiose narcissism with communal narcissism behind it, we see someone who truly believes they are going to save the world and they already have the place on the wall where they're going to put their Nobel Peace Prize and they walk around as though they are the larger than life humanitarian. Yet they're still very arrogant and unempathic and entitled. When we see grandiose narcissism with malignant narcissism coming behind it, we see someone who's very dangerous, who can be very charming and charismatic on the face of it, but also be capable of being tremendously controlling, exploit, exploitative, and to be able to wear these masks of being very magnetic and then behind closed doors being very cruel and isolating. The world sees a great charismatic person. The people close to them behind closed doors see someone monstrous. When we see grandiose narcissism with neglect, neglectful narcissism behind it, we see a person who may be able to come out and tout their greatness, often in work or some other pursuit they have, but they have absolutely no regard for the people in their lives unless they are useful. So they may teach, treat their administrative assistant with more love than their child. When a grandiose narcissism has a self-righteous narcissism behind it, we witness a person who proclaims their moral righteousness and holds themselves up as an example of the way to live life the right way. They will often brag about their children being better than other people or their families or their lifestyles and often take a sort of snobby judgmental stance about other people. These are often workaholics. They will often work a lot, a lot, a lot and kind of hit everyone over the head with their great work ethic and proclaim their wonderfulness at being such hardworking people. When you have grandiose narcissism with a vulnerable narcissism behind it, well, that right there is the purest form of a narcissist. 
the grandiose narcissist, is who we see when the narcissist feels safe and life is going their way. They have the money or the credibility or the reputation or the power, whatever it is they need, whatever supply they need. But nothing always goes right for anyone. And on the days it doesn't go right, when frustration or disappointment or stress rears its head, then you see the victimized, resentful, sullen, and aggrieved, vulnerable, narcissistic qualities rear their head. Now, obviously, all the, these other things can be mixed up, too, just like these astrological signs, right? Communal narcissism with malignant narcissism behind that. Think cult leader. Self-righteous narcissism with vulnerable narcissism behind it. Think a person who may view themselves as a long-suffering person who is better than everyone else, but the world just envies, of how, env envies them for how rightly they live their lives. It's not quite as fun as a zodiac sign. As I prepared this video, I couldn't resist, and I looked at an interpretation of my astrological chart. I saw that I'm supposed to have strong willpower, ambition, physical energy, passion, determination, deep emotions, clear vision and know what to do, happy when I'm in control, and I enjoy managing anything practical. Let me tell you this, if them's my signs, it beats the hell out of unempathic, entitled, grandiose, and mean. At the end of the day, astrology isn't going to help you much if you are dealing with a narcissist, but it kind of does give us an interesting structure to think about how different patterns can combine, maybe not star signs, but narcissistic patterns, but pay attention to these combinations and how these patterns come together when it comes to narcissism. Because doing this may help you make sense of the many nuanced differences between narcissists, just even in your own life, and help you not get tricked by things like communal narcissists, the ones who think they're saving the world, but are actually really, really unkind people. Hope that helped. And again, to all my Capricorn friends out there, hi.